Hey guys, welcome back. I am really excited for this video because it has been very requested. It's about my fail-proof way to get rid of fungus gnats. Now I have tried all sorts of different ways to get rid of fungus gnats and a lot of them are helpful and beneficial and do reduce the amount of fungus gnats. The routine I'm going to be sharing today um, is the only one that I have found is 100% guarantee to get rid of them. Now, the last time I did this, it was eight months ago and I didn't need to do anything. I wasn't experiencing any kind of issues with fungus gnats. However, I have brought in new plants, new soil, and I have fungus gnats again. So I was just gonna go ahead and treat my plants and I thought, okay, why don't I film a video and share with you guys what I do? Now, a lot of this isn't new knowledge. It's just my interpretation of a lot of information that I've gathered. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. My name is Ashley and this channel is for crazy planty people. So if that brings a smile to your face, make sure to subscribe that's the only way to not miss a video and I do post about twice a week um, I'm also on Instagram and I love 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 my plant communities so maybe give me a follow on there um, if you want more day-to-day -day type of planty stuff to look at I don't know now fungus gnats are so annoying oh my gosh like as I'm talking to you I'm seeing them buzz around so I have had friends message me um, hey I'm dealing with a weird pest it's a fly like it's in my plants and I'm like is it like a fruit fly and as soon as they say yes I know that they're dealing with with fungus gnat. This treatment that I'm gonna be doing today, I always share it with them um, and it's worked out great for them as well. The thing to know about fungus gnats is, is they love moist, damp soil and that is where they thrive. Now, with that said, I'm an underwaterer. Like most of my plants that don't do well, don't do well because I haven't watered them enough. So really damp soil isn't so much of an issue for me and I still struggle with fungus gnats. The real concern with fungus gnats, in addition to them being annoying, is that they will eat the roots of your plants you know not so much the large mature plants that have like really really big healthy root systems but more smaller plants which you wouldn't think would be a big deal but with plants being so so high in demand right now especially house plants and they're so expensive a lot of them many of us are just buying you know small plants for those of us that do have these smaller plants to have a fungus net infestation is a little worrying because there is a chance it could be eating the root system of your new expensive plants and so when I saw that I have you know a bit of an infestation going I thought all right I better get on it and treat them um, and it's so easy it's so easy the, the the process I'm gonna be sharing with you today I'm hoping this video is helpful for those of you in the plant community that maybe have to deal with fungus gnat problems and I know many of us do some of the things you can do to maybe prevent fungus gnats uh, in addition to what I'm gonna be sharing today is making sure that you're not overwatering your plants and leaving them saturated for too long um, you know fungus gnats love good moist soil they can get in there and lay their eggs so it's always recommended to bottom water your plants so bottom watering super simple you just take a bowl or a cup or a saucer or whatever fill it with water make sure your plants dried out put it in there and then over time the plant will suck up the water just make sure that the root system and the plant itself sucks up as much moisture as it wants and then when it stops um, soaking up the water you know okay it's had enough you can just dump out the excess water and it just will prevent the top layer from staying super wet because it will get dry pretty quickly um, and most of the water is going to be saturated in here where you know the deep roots are so bottom watering has so many amazing benefits it helps prevent overwatering it helps prevent fungus gnats so I always recommend that to, to do that when you can. The other thing you can do is any kind of top dressing on the soil, whether it's rocks or orchid bark or sand, anything that you can put on the top of your plants to you know, prevent the fungus gnats from having easy access to the soil is gonna help with a fungus gnat problem because they want that like easy access, nice wet soil to get in there and lay their eggs. And they can't do that if they have like sand and rocks and that kind of thing as a barrier. So also it's super helpful. I know people put diamaceous earth um, in there sometimes and that is a good preventative for many insects and bugs. I've heard people put cinnamon. Another form of prevention that I have not personally used but I did feel that it was worth mentioning during this video are beneficial nematodes. I'm a huge fan of beneficial insects to combat pests um, and that's what beneficial nematodes are they're a type of roundworm and they'll attack those fungus gnats and from what I read you can mix them up in a watering can and you can water your plants with it I've read all types of different reviews some people say it works great some people say they haven't had great success with it you know feel free to leave in the comments if you've used them and any suggestions that you have because I think that's a really cool way to combat fungus gnats that I haven't personally tried so with fungus gnats there's two issues you have 
have your adults that are really annoying, they're buzzing around, and then you have the eggs that they lay and the larvae in the soil. So with fungus gnats, really the only way to get rid of them truly is to just treat the soil. So adult fungus gnats live, you know, about a week, give or take a little bit. And during that week, they're laying eggs all the time. They love to lay eggs. They can lay hundreds of them. That's where the real problem is, because if you get rid of the adult fungus gnats, it doesn't matter because their eggs hatch within seven to 14 days. And if they've been laying throughout the week, they're going to have, you know, hatchings happen all the time. Um, so that's where you really want to address the problem is, is in the soil. When I first started trying to combat my fungus snap problem. I was mainly just using the yellow fly traps and those are great because it helps get rid of those adult ones that are buzzing around and I'd say that this is a nice symbiotic relationship. In addition to what I'm sharing today, maybe use those yellow fly traps to get rid of the adults because my treatment is really mainly for the soil. There are all sorts of products that you can use separate from what I'm going to share today. You know, neem oil is great. Hydrogen peroxide is very helpful. I'm not going to go in detail on, on how to use those to treat fungus gnats because to be honest, I haven't had like the best experience with them compared to what I'm doing today. So with that said, I'm going to jump into sharing the process and the routine that I do to treat fungus gnats. Now it's a process that isn't going to be new to a lot of people, but I have tweaked it through trial and error um, to make it a little bit easier and also more effective and really allows me to use the product to its maximum, maximum potency and ability. So the product I'm going to be using is Mosquito Bits. Now this product is well known, well loved, used by a lot of people in the house plant community. It is not a new product by any means. Um, and it is awesome. Now, when I first started using it, I would just sprinkle it either on the tops of my soil or I would mix it in and then I'd water. And it definitely helped, but it didn't really like tackle the problem like I was hoping it would. So I did a bit of research and I started making mosquito bit tea. Now, a lot of people obviously know about mosquito bit tea. I'll show you how I make it today because I make it a little bit differently. I have some things that I've set up to make it easier for myself because these granules get everywhere. When I first started making mosquito bit tea, I didn't find that it was super potent. So I'll show you what I do a little bit differently than I used to. Um, but this product is awesome. It can be ordered on Amazon. I'll include the link in my description below for you guys. So this process I'm about to show you is very simple, very straightforward. I have made the grand statement that it is a 100% guarantee way to get rid of fungus gnats and I stand by that because that's been my experience with it so far. But I have to make a disclaimer that you will have to repeat this process every time you water your plants for at least the next three to four times you water your plants. The treatment I'm going to be showing you only lasts for about 14 days. So you definitely want to continue to treat your plants. So in addition to mosquito bits, I have here some aquarium filters. Now I ordered these on Amazon. They were $5.99 for a pack of 10 and they are reusable. Absolutely amazing. I'm really excited to use these and they look like this. And they're pretty big. Now you could get tea bags from Amazon if you wanted to. I wasn't sure how big these were gonna be and I felt like tea bags probably wouldn't be big enough for the amount of water I was gonna be using. Um, and these are awesome. And the other thing I'm gonna be using is a nice big watering can. And that's it. I mean, that's all you need in addition to some water. I do have gloves on. Mosquito bits are supposed to be non-toxic, but I'm always just a little bit careful with any kind of pesticide that I use. Um, now you don't need to do something like this. You can just put it into the watering can. However, the granules are hard to scoop up out of a watering can and they tend to get stuck out of here. And and I just don't like the thought of them getting on stuff. So if you're okay with that and you don't wanna do a filter type of thing, totally fine. Um, it won't make any kind of difference. You can also use, uh, people have used stockings, like I said, tea bags, pretty much anything that you can use as a filter. I like this one because it like zips up and I can contain it. It's really easy. <laughs> And, um, you know, $6 for 10 was a great deal. And the recommended amount is four tablespoons per gallon. This one is, 2.6, yeah, 2.6. I'm just gonna eyeball it, it's taking way too long. Sagittarius moment. I'm going to go ahead, I've zipped it up, and I'm gonna pop it in to my 
watering can. So when I make this solution, I use hot water. I don't use boiling water. I don't use almost boiling water because I don't want to kill off that bacteria, but I definitely don't use cold or lukewarm water either because when I've done that, I haven't found it works as well. I mean, I can still run my hand under it and it's okay, but I find that hot water really makes my solution extra concentrated. It really extracts that good bacteria that we want that's going to kill those fungus gnats. And I've seen a huge difference when I've done that. And that is really what does the trick is using that hot water and definitely don't water your plants with the hot water. I let it sit to cool off. If you don't wanna wait, that's totally fine. I would say do three quarters of the way, make sure you use that hot water, let it sit for at least 20 minutes to get super, super potent, and then fill up the rest of the way with as cold water as you can get. And you should at that point have a nice temperature to water your plants with. If it's still too hot and you wanna do like a 50% cold, 50% hot, uh, maybe add more mosquito bits off the back that way the the first you know the hot water is even more saturated so when you add the cold water um, it it's a it's a good level just make sure it's not watered down too much because if it is you know mostly water with not much of the you know mosquito bits solution that you've created with your tea it won't really hammer you know the soil and those fungus gnat larvae and eggs so I'm gonna go ahead and do a treatment this time and then once all my plants dry out I'm going to give it another treatment probably in about you know a week and a half to two weeks and I'm just gonna keep this up for the next probably three or four times that I water it adds you know maybe you know 20 minutes to each time that I that I water my plants and it's so worth it because it gets rid of all those fungus gnats and it prevents them from eating the roots of my small small baby plants of which I have quite a few right now feel free to leave in the comments below tips and tricks that have worked for you it's not only just helpful for me to see but people can look in the comments and see what's worked for other people and it's just nice to not have to deal with the pests all all the time so I hope this was helpful for you guys and uh, I appreciate you watching this video and if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss a video and it shows up in your news feed um, to subscribe is the only way to not miss a video um, and I'm also on Instagram so give me a follow on there I have all sorts of great videos set up for this month can't wait to share it with you guys all these nurseries are getting amazing restocks so we're gonna have a good plant shopping month as well thank you so much again guys I will definitely be be seeing you soon. Bye.